And now outside our air is choked with smoke. We see an orange sky, an obscure sun on too many days. And we see this week the places and spaces that we call home, that we know and that we love, have a tint, a fiery glow that makes them look like scenes from another planet. COVID first kept us in our homes, and now throughout California and the Western states of this country, so many of our neighbors have had to leave those homes as fires come near and threaten their lives. We've lost souls, we've lost firefighters, we've lost homes, and for many people, they've lost hope. COVID led us all to wear masks to protect from the spread, but now we're wearing them to help us breathe through the ash that hangs in our sky. But even in the midst of the latest challenge, we do what we do here in Los Angeles. We continue to help one another, to find a way to dig deep, to find that extra gear, to keep go going, and to make sure that we protect everything that we love here in Los Angeles and in this world. This past weekend, we activated four smoke relief centers at Rec and Park facilities here in Los Angeles to provide residents reprieve from the unhealthy skies. We've sent our fire crews, who are on the line right now from the Los Angeles Fire Department, to help just here in our backyard battle the Bobcat Fire in the Angeles National Forest, which as of right now has burned 44,393 acres and is at just 3% containment. Other firefighters from our city are further north in 10 different fires where they're on the front lines protecting communities who last year sent their fire departments to help protect our communities when fire came to the edge of Los Angeles. All told, we see in our state more acres and more destruction than any year in our recorded history. We are feeling the immediate impacts of climate change and facing challenges to, that demand our commitment to the long-term solutions that it's too late to reverse the warming for, but to mitigate the impact in our communities and throughout the world. Our unflinching determination to reverse this devastating new normal year after year after year. But this year has not given us the luxury of fighting one crisis at a time. And while we fight these fires, we continue to fight the ongoing fire of COVID-19 in our communities. Since the day coronavirus, this coronavirus arrived here in Los Angeles County, our top public health goal has been keeping infections low enough to make sure our hospitals have the capacity to serve any patients who are worst hit by COVID-19 and any, any other maladies they face. That's not only the job of our medical personnel and our first responders, we've learned it's the job for all of us. Each one of us in our communities, in our homes, our places of work, have that immediate work to do where we aren't just passive bystanders, but active lifesavers every day. Yesterday, I and Supervisor Catherine Barger met here in Los Angeles with the United States Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams, to share the lessons of our response here to the pandemic. The testing centers we stood up, the nursing facilities where we demanded tests and cut deaths by more than 80%, the success in eliminating the racial health disparity among African Americans in Los Angeles County in the face of COVID-19. And when we were asked what more we needed, we both asked him to take this message back to Washington, that Angelinos, Californians, and Americans are counting on the federal government to deliver financial support to those local governments and first responders on the front lines those workers in the hospitals, those firefighters transporting people, folks that every single day are putting their bodies and their lives on the line to protect us. I was pleased to see a door open up again today in those negotiations, and I urge the President, I urge our Senate, and I urge our congressional leaders to come to an agreement now, put politics aside, and help our cities who are facing furloughs and layoffs, help our first responders that are saving lives get the financial backing that they need and help us save those that are suffering the most from the economic devastation that has resulted from this pandemic. You see, threats like fires and deadly viruses call on all of us to come together across political lines and political boundaries, to support one another and to play an active role in saving lives. 
We are not powerless, my friends. We are powerful. When we come together and we figure out ways that we can protect one another, whether it's our loved ones or, our, or strangers in our city, we are one Los Angeles, and we are proving that each day. I've asked so much of you during this pandemic. Stay home, wash your hands, wear a mask, keep your distance, get tested. I know it can be a lot to contain or even to remember, but you've done an amazing job. Our hospitalizations from COVID right now are at the lowest level they have been since the first outbreak here in LA. Your actions have saved the lives of thousands of your family members and neighbors. That's something to be proud of for the rest of your life. But our progress remains fragile. We know that. One week where we let up on wearing a mask, the virus spreads. One party that should not be thrown that people attend, the virus spreads. Open things up too quickly and the virus spreads. So tonight I want to talk to you about a new threat that is just around the corner where I need your help one more time. I need you to do one more thing that you add to that list to protect yourselves and your family and your loved ones. This threat is the flu. Every Angelino has a critical role to play in preventing a worst case scenario. Doctors are already talking about it. Folks from the CDC and others, Dr. Fauci, are saying this could be the worst phase of this pandemic just in the next couple months. If we see our hospitals, our community, and our economy overwhelmed and overrun by cases of COVID and the flu together, everything we have worked for could be threatened. We cannot let that happen. We will not let that happen. So I'm going to ask you to add this one more thing to that list so you can save lives and stop the spread. Now is the time for you and your family to go get a flu shot. Follow the instructions from your doctor or your health care provider. Visit Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid in your neighborhood or one of the many other locations, including community clinics, where you can get yourself the flu vaccine. The CDC recommends that everyone over six years of age, six, sorry, six months of age should get the annual flu vaccine by the end of October. So we've got a little bit over a month to do this, but don't delay. Do it now. Last year, fewer than half of all Americans got a flu shot. This year, we need to get 100%. We need to be, do much better and make sure everybody is vaccinated to avoid the double hit of both COVID and the flu at the same time. You're going to hear a lot of talk from me and from medical professionals over the next two months about this so that we can keep up the progress that we've made in our public health condition, progress that is reflected, thankfully, in today's data. The county now estimates that the rate of transmission in LA County, or the R rate, is 0.95, slightly higher than last week, but still indicates decreased infection rates from where we were this summer and below that magical threshold of one meaning that those numbers should continue to come down as long as somebody infected isn't spreading it to more than one person. As of today, five of the six critical indicators that we track, again, are headed in the right direction. And yesterday, the state again updated the tier status for each county. While Ellick County remains in the most restrictive tier, purple, there is some very positive news. That met the metrics that are most important to the state, the case rate, and the positivity rate continue to improve here in Los Angeles. That means that if we keep this up, we may be permitted by the state to move into the next tier in the coming weeks and months. But here's the bottom line. We are slowly but surely moving in the right direction, and your actions have saved lives. But let's not confuse progress with promise. Positive trends don't mean that we're out of the woods by any stretch. The virus is still here, and we still have to act with vigilance. So you know what to do. Keep avoiding those gatherings. We're waiting to see what the impact of Labor Day is, but knock on wood, it seemed much better out there than the previous holidays of the 4th of July and Memorial Day. Keep maintaining at, le at least six feet of distance. Wash your hands and your surfaces. Wear a mask. Avoid crowds and conversations. And masks, we know, make a huge difference. Today, in fact, the director of the CDC said, and I quote, that masks are the most important, powerful public health tool we have. That wearing a face covering is more guaranteed to protect against COVID 
than a COVID vaccine because a vaccine may not provoke an immune response for everybody. I'm very proud that LA was the first big city widespread to require masks. And Angelinos have embraced their importance in everyday life. And we must continue to encourage others to use this critical tool. Since July, almost 20,000 people have looked at the way we're using art to get this message out by visiting the website of our LA Mask Print Project that we started in July to amplify this message and to download prints from some of our greatest artists here in LA. Art that shows the very best of our city's creativity and spirit. Tonight, we're releasing another poster. It's from Aaron Rodriguez, an artist and designer who's based in West Los Angeles. And you can download this for free at coronavirus.lacity.org slash mask art. And businesses and residents are encouraged to post this in your windows, in your shop doors, alongside the other mask, sides, mask uh, prints that are at the site. We have these for multiple um, neighborhoods too. So thank you so much to Aaron for your extraordinary work. Today in the county, we had reported 1,148 new infections, bringing the total to 256,148. 496 of those cases were here in the city of Los Angeles, bringing the city's total to 104,168 cases since March. The good news is our seven-day average since a week ago has now been under 1,000 for the first time since May 21st. That's a job well done, Los Angeles. That's a job you can be proud of. And let's keep those numbers coming down. The county, most tragically, and our hearts go out to everybody who has lost someone, reported 31 deaths. This brings the total of fallen Angelinos to 6,303 souls. Of these 31 deaths, 11 were in the city of Los Angeles. And we mourn with every family. I'm going to be sharing a story of one at the end of this presentation. Our hospital inventory, as I mentioned, remains stable and lower than we've seen. Across the county, there are 759 available beds, 593 of them for acute care, and 166 in the ICU. And we have 1,243 available ventilators. We have 238 ICU patients who are severely sick. This is a substantial decrease since last month, and we pray for the recovery of each and every one of those with the families that I know are hanging on every message they get from a doctor about their loved one's conditions. Today, 780 Angelinos are in the hospital with COVID, which means we've cut that number of hospitalized patients nearly in half over the last five weeks. But even as we have these better numbers, these lowest levels since the start of the pandemic. Yesterday, we saw the first modest increase in hospitalizations in recent weeks. It came back down again today, but this is a fragile number. We can't be careful enough. If you feel there's even a slight chance that you have been exposed to COVID-19, please get tested right away. Ask your doctor for an appointment or schedule a test at one of the community health centers or a city, county, or state site. At our city sites this week, we have a capacity of more than 20,000 people each and every day. And thank you to the volunteers who have been working in this heat, this record heat, to continue providing this service to all of their neighbors and fellow Angelinos. You're truly heroes. And as of today, 1.4 million people in our city, in our city have been tested. And our seven-day positivity rate is 4.59%, according to the state. The county is tracking that even lower, as low as 2.3 percent in recent days. We also continue to send mobile teams all around Los Angeles so that you don't have to come to us, but we come to you. These have been successful and popular, and we're going to keep going where the need is greatest. Today and tomorrow, we have mobile testing teams at East 60th and South Central Avenue and at San Fernando Recreation Park. And remember, these tests are free for anyone with or without symptoms. So to find, one, uh, to find any of these more than 100 testing locations, please go to our testing website at coronavirus.lacity.org slash testing.